In these videos, I will take a look at some of the comments that you, the viewer, have shared with me. Some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel. Some of them may not be, depending upon their content. I use this as an opportunity to answer questions, address criticisms, and acknowledge criticisms, of course, and direct the conversation, keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended, meaning it is a grammar channel. This is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. And so that's the main purpose of this channel. So if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel, I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field. This is definitely a learning place, a place for learning where I teach not only the grammar, but also the psychology of the grammar. One other thing, I don't ever take anything personal. It's never personal. Although it may seem like it is at times, it's not, it's not at all. And I highly recommend everyone out there commenting, follow the same protocol. Don't take anything personal that I say. What you put in is what you get out. The energy that you bring here, I will most likely either give back to you, maybe a little bit, or maybe a thousandfold. It just depends upon how you approach me. This is my vessel. There are terms and conditions. If you comply with them, everything's peachy. If you don't, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from Julian B. And they said, wonderful video. Thanks so much. I know absolutely nothing about quantum grammar. I'm wondering if you know anyone that teach this in Spanish. I apologies if this question is stupid. This is totally new to me. And then my Kuliana was, I know very few people who know correct sentence structure in English, let alone Spanish. If you'd like to learn it, contact me, and then I give my email address. And then Julian corresponded back and said, thanks so much for the replay. I will see your video first to understand better the concept and how to apply it. Because English is not my first language, I thought we'll be good to learn this in Spanish. The more I discover things to be a sovereign, the more confused I get. Ha ha ha. Anyway is a process. Thanks so much again for your time. Well, thank you for your comment, Julian. Uh, to address what I perceive to be the volition behind your comments, if one is to learn another language or grammar, say, for example, I don't know Spanish and you know Spanish, would you teach me Spanish using only Spanish or would you teach me Spanish using my native tongue, English, or a common tongue that we both know? you would have to use a common tongue that we both know in order to teach Spanish. It's the same thing with correct sentence structure. You cannot teach correct sentence structure just using correct sentence structure. At least to my knowledge, you can't do that. It's nearly impossible. It's like handing someone a textbook of German, someone who doesn't speak German, and say, learn German. And there's no English in the, in the German textbook at all. It's the same thing. Now, to go further with it, many of my best students, Julian, are non-native English speakers, meaning English is not their first language. Um, some of my best students are indeed non-English speakers, native speakers. So there's that. I mean, you don't have as many rules to have to overcome or challenges linguistically, so to speak. So it's up to you. I mean, if you want to learn the grammar, I can teach it to you using English. And then once you get closure on it using English, then you can translate it, transpose it over to Spanish. And then you can be the one to begin teaching others correct sentence structure using Spanish. It's all up to you. Again, feel free to contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen to apply for a workshop. Next comment comes from Wyatt Hunter, 
and they say trying to have closer on re when you place re in front of a fact it modifies the fact changing the motion of the fact away from the fact am i correct no why you are not correct because there are no facts to begin with there are no facts unless you're using position loadial phrases now this has to do with a stream that i did where wyatt made a comment and said re equals no and i simply asked wyatt what's your closure on that why are you saying that re means no what's your reason can you certify that for me and as of yet he has not been able to do that um of course there are methods and techniques you can use to certify the tangibility or non-tangibility of a particle or whether that particle is indeed a negative condition of state or not. And the most common mechanic that I use and that anyone can use is to just look it up in an etymology dictionary and go to the earliest nativity root meanings of the word and find out is that a negative condition of state or is it not? And why is it a negative condition of state? If so, what credentials a negative condition of state? You have to know all of these things as well. And a good way to learn it would be to study my Parse playlist or my syntax playlist. I go into great de detail, a great depth of closure in multiple videos on those playlists. So feel free uh, to study those, Wyatt. Or also, you know, the option's always open if you're really serious about it. Contact me at the email address below and apply for a workshop. Next comment comes from Cashton. And they say, at Coral Blade Grotto, how some people read something and try to go into court and try to talk like they know something and they don't know SHIT just running off what they read when it's more to it. Um, well, first of all, and I did mention this in the comments field, Cashton, I would appreciate it if you would honor the terms and conditions of my comments field, which are readily available to anyone who takes the time to read them in the comments field, the terms and conditions do come up if you click on them. Um, I appreciate no foul or cursing language here. Um, I appreciate this. I want this to be a knowledge cultivation station and using curse words and things like that just don't have a place here it's part of my personal terms and conditions i mean if you don't feel comfortable not using cuss words there are plenty of other places on the internet to just spew forth whatever you know swear words you want this is not one of them so please honor the terms and conditions of my vessel and secondly yes of course you must know what you're doing before you do it it's only common sense um, I think what you're talking about and what I'm talking about are two entirely different things. Using correct sentence structure, creating your own courts is completely different than walking into a fiction court, answering a summons or submitting paperwork. It's completely different because now you become subordinate to the fiction system and equally so. You better know what you're doing. You better have your fiction knowledge up to date with all the latest modifications in order to safely get through there. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel, court venues. And you can too, Cashton, if you decide to get serious and learn the grammar. Contact me at the email address below to apply for a workshop. Serious inquiries only. Next comment comes from the five footer and they say colon question claim answer of the commitment to the quantum grammar learning is with the positive volition performance meeting by the Preston Henry board Boyd and Jason Matthew glass and then oh and my cooliana to it was to give Preston a syntax lesson because the sentence is not correct sentence structure it's adverb verb adjective pronoun and then Kashtin 
said, to be unknown, your brain has to function the same way. If not, then it's pointless. Don't try the system with little knowledge of power. I guess Kashin thinks a study of power is in order. That if you know and have closure on what power is, then perhaps some way you'd be able to safely navigate the fiction system. I disagree. I think that having a knowledge of grammar and being a steward of your grammar and your contracts would be may, way more, more important than studying uh, the knowledge of power. So to go back to what the five-footer said there, um, the reason why the sentence is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, we have for the question, claim, answer of the commitment. Now, we need two points with which to draw a straight line. In correct sentence structure, there's a cause and a concern. The cause is the positional, the function of for. The concern is the positional of. He does have that. He is for the question, claim, answer of the commitment. Never mind the particle of negation and answer. A vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation. Let's exercise some honor and grace here. But here's where it goes completely into fiction. A verb would have to come right there after the word commitment, but it doesn't. Not only doesn't the five-footer use a verb, but he uses future tense too, which in correct sentence structure, the jurisdiction is the continuum, the now space, nothing to do with future or past. So that is completely not correct. Two is a future tense pronoun, and that throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and then he also uses, well, he or she, I don't know, if it's a he or, oh, it's Preston, so it's a he. The ing in learning is a particle of negation. And then he does put a verb in here. And then he has another particle of negation in meeting. And then he is making a claim for me here, which one would not make a claim for someone else. That is a trespass. One may only make claims for oneself, Preston. You cannot, I mean... I mean, I guess it's your volition if you want to make me the authority of your claim. And also, if it were correct and going backwards, you would make me the cause of your claim. I did not give you consent to make any claim for me. So keep that in mind. Hope this helps. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Cha Egasho. And they say, but how would a lawyer, etc., know that a person to be guilty unless there at the time the crime was committed? Unless there at the time the crime was committed. Even a confession of guilt to lawyer could still not be total proof of guilt. What if they confess to protect another? Well, Cha, the whole point of the video was to show how rotten the fiction system is. Everything you're talking about in this comment has only to do with the fiction legal BS system. If you want to talk about confessing to a lawyer as being proof, if that's what constitutes proof in your construct, then you and I most certainly will not be contracting anytime soon in a court. Um, but again, the point, of the, the point of the video was to show how contradictory the fiction system is. And, and then by contrast, how the geometric level playing field of correct sentence structure totally negates all of that BS and invites everyone up to be equal on a geometric level playing field and participate with correctness if you got the guts to do it and the knowledge of course next comment comes from Jeff Baird and they say people don't seem to get the application of quantum grammar having the power to void any fictitious contract from a speeding ticket to a mortgage or a constitution even the Bible all written in fictitious language well on one hand that is true um, on the other hand, I would question your volition for wanting to void a speeding ticket. Were you speeding? I've had this conversation with numerous people. 
there are speed limit placards, signs, right? In a residential area, for example, right outside of my window, there's a street, and I think the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. This is a speed limit sign that denotes the maximum speed that an individual can drive down the road safely, meaning the pedestrians and children who are playing, you know, it's a safe speed for everyone involved. If you choose to drive down this road that is clearly labeled 25 miles per hour, and you choose to drive down at 55 miles per hour, and then you hit a child and kill a child, who's at fault? Who's in the wrong here? Someone asked me, Jason, what can I do about a speeding ticket? My first question is, were you speeding? You can contract into fiction with honor and grace. Let that sink in. Uh, so that's the only question I had about this individual's uh, comment. Also, the mortgage. Um, if Jeff Baird is participating with a mortgage, did Jeff Baird read that contract? Did you read that adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction contract? And if so, did you agree to it? Because it's very important to read your contracts, whether it's in correct sentence structure or fiction babble. You have to know what it is you're doing, know what it is you're agreeing to. If you, through negligence, decide to ignore it, and then later on down the line decide, oh, hey, this isn't, this isn't fair. Well, you should have read the contract, right? It only makes sense. Why would you agree to something? Why would you consciously agree to signing a contract with someone who's going to financially screw you over? Why would you agree to that? And then if you do agree to it, why would you later on decide, no, no, I don't want to do that? It'd be like if you came up to me and asked me, Jason, you know, could I borrow uh, 500 bucks? And then I say, well, you know what? I'm taking a big risk in, uh, if I were to give you that 500 bucks. So I'm going to give you the 500 bucks, but you have to pay me back 800 bucks in eight weeks. And you agree to it. And once in a while, you send me 50 bucks, 100 bucks here. And then we get up to about four or 500 bucks. And then you decide, you know what? I'm not going to pay him 800 bucks. That's just not fair. Even though you agreed to pay me back 800 bucks, you now want to get out of it. Does that seem right to you? Never mind the fact that was it right for me to ask for that extra money from you, that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with you agreeing to it. You didn't have to agree to it. It's a choice. Do you see what I'm saying? By no means am I trying to defend fiction or anything like that. What I'm trying to do is drive the point home that we all, as thinking individuals, can make our own choices about contract. And we can choose to read the contract and we can choose to agree or not agree. But the point is the volition and the will to perform on these contracts rather than try to get out of them. Do you see what I'm saying? Next comment comes from Mark Allen Wood, and they say, Yes, thank you for sharing your knowledge space. Did you know that Jason, did you know, Jason, that the letter J did not come into existence and added to the alphabet until the 14th century space? Therefore, Jesus was the knight, his name, there is power in the name, his name was Yah, Hula, Wayahuaha. Okay, I'm not going to read that again. Um, yes, I am aware of the history of the letter J, indeed. Uh, however, again, just like I asked... Uh, the other individual, I think their name was Cashin, please observe the terms and conditions of this channel. In that, bringing personal religious beliefs or discussions into the comments field is a violation of the terms and conditions. I may talk about religion and things like that in the videos as a tool of psychology to show you that you need to be able to certify facts in the claims that you make. However, but to come into the comments field and talk about 
the name and power and Yahoo the wife, who a ha ha or whatever. I mean, that's just has no place in this comments field. This comments field is about grammar and learning the psychology of the grammar and the mechanics of the grammar. So, Mark, I, I would appreciate it if you uh, honor those terms and conditions. Thank you for the comment. Final comment comes from April Juanita, and they say, reference, mini class, September 23, 2022. I'm going to the store at 6 p.m. Here is the correct sentence reference in that video. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the vision, with the performance of the travel, with the port and terminal of the store, with the location, the 1,800 hours Eastern Standard Continuum, with the statement by this claimant and by this traveler. Your name. My question, if that had said I went to the store at 6 p.m., what would the correct sentence structure be? My reason for asking is clarity on future tense, past tenses, so I can compare the difference. Uh, April, I'm pretty sure if I didn't give closure to that in that video, there are other videos that um, do give closure on that. If you just take the time to study, I mean, I know it takes a lot to go through these videos. It's time consuming. However, there are no shortcuts to this. And for me to just give it to you like this, I don't think as a tutor of doing this for five years is going to help you at all uh, in getting your closures on it that's going to last or stick with you. So April, if you want to learn this grammar, and I've offered this before, contact me at the email address below at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop. Uh, outside of that, if, you, if you're not in a position to do that, I just recommend thinking about things logically. Think about things logically as how you would convey, convey a thought process, a cogitation, as I showed you here in the future tense, your vision of seeing something that's going to happen with the volition of doing something of performance and juxtapose that with the past. How would that work? How would you work that into a now space scenario? Logically, just think it through. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that you would be able to come up with an answer. Uh, if not by yourself, watching the other videos, the multiple videos that I put out giving closure to that very topic. Thank you for the question. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. As I've said ad nauseum throughout this video, if you want to learn this grammar, if you're serious about it, if you're motivated to finally take that step to learn this stuff, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. Apply for a workshop. You can also join this channel and support this channel by hitting the join button down there somewhere. There are two tiers. Uh, the first tier, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. And the second tier, I also appreciate your support. The second tier gets some exclusive content not available to the public. Um, and that about wraps it up. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.